Hey everyone, I'm Natalie Doherty. I work as a transportation consultant at Barron Piers in their San Francisco office. My presentation will cover modeling efforts for an evacuation assessment uh, in the San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, so I'll start the presentation with an overview or background on evacuation planning work, and then I'll talk about more specifically a project I worked on. I'll go through the technical analysis approach, talk about some of the results, and then I'll end with some lessons learned on using Vizoom software for an evacuation study. So proposed projects go through an environmental process to determine the potential impacts of the project on the environment and on the surrounding transportation network. And as a result of recent environmental lawsuits, there emerged a need for these projects to study evacuation routes and travel times to uh, determine whether uh, extra demand on the roadway would uh, cause some safety concerns with people being able to evacuate in different scenarios. And it's pretty tricky to do evacuation assessments because of the data we have available. So we've been using local or regional travel demand models that are designed to provide uh, expected demand for weekday traffic, not necessarily for different evacuation events like an earthquake or a wildfire or a tsunami. So Farron Piers has recently been involved in working on evacuation studies in California and in Washington, and we have several more ongoing. And for our travel demand forecasting, we've actually built a tool called EVAC Plus, which takes uh, other travel demand data and further refines it to better uh, forecast demand related to an evacuation. So that's been our typical approach to use EVAC Plus on our projects and to pair that with dynamic traffic assignment models. We think DTA is a great approach for modeling evacuations uh, because we're able to kind of visualize and identify where bottlenecks are, where congestion and queues are forming, and we're able to suggest mitigations to uh, hopefully reduce the travel times associated with an evacuation. Uh, and for this project, we chose to use the Zoom for our DTA modeling. And so I'll next introduce the project. So this project is the Portola Valley Evacuation Study. Uh, Portola Valley is located in the San Francisco Bay Area, and it's on the slopes of the Santa Cruz Mountains to the south. This town is pretty small, and it's composed of mostly residential land uses with uh, very little employee land use and some equestrian land use. So the town has been pretty concerned about a wildfire due to uh, recent nearby wildfires. And so they actually uh, set up an emergency preparedness committee that's been tasked with planning and preparing for a wildfire. And so this committee has been pretty involved in our project, helping us identify uh, evacuation routes, thinking about our trip assignment, and also what wildfire scenarios to study. So we chose to use Zoom for this project for a couple different reasons. So the first is that Vizoom simulation based assignment is a pretty great tool for visualizing and identifying where congestion is occurring and we're able to also uh, get results for different travel times in a pretty small uh, time segments. Another reason we thought Vizoom was a good fit for this project is because we were only looking at vehicle trips. Uh, I think we would have maybe preferred to use Vizoom if we were looking at other transportation modes. Uh, and then another reason as well we use Vizoom is because this town has a pretty simple roadway network composed of mostly two lane roadways and pretty much all two way stop or always stop intersections. So the level of effort to uh, get a detailed network for DTA was not too bad. And it was also relatively easy to import our zone structures and our travel demand data. So for our project, we first identified those key evacuation routes and the scenarios with the help of the Emergency Preparedness Committee. And then we set up our origin destination data. Then we set up our uh, transportation network and procedure parameters. And then we did some calibration and validation for our model and then produced our evacuation travel time estimates. So here you can see the key evacuation routes for Portola Valley. So three of those routes you can see go to the north uh, across Interstate 280, 
either onto the interstate or into the more urban area north of that. And then we also have one evacuation route that is kind of to the northwest on Woodside Road. So uh, the town provided us some information about trip assignment. So they didn't have any local shelters in the area. So we assumed that people would be traveling outside of Portola Valley to stay with friends or family or to hotels. And so we assumed a fairly even split of our uh, destination trips across those northern evacuation routes and very few trips to the uh, Woodside Portola Road route. And initially when planning for this uh, study, we were trying to predict how a wildfire would evolve in the area. And instead we decided on three key scenarios to study. So the first scenario we studied is all routes open, which is our baseline scenario. Uh, and you can see the arrows represent uh, the, the travel demand in those directions, uh, with the thicker the green arrow representing higher demand. And then the blue arrow represents the population with constrained access. So uh, this population group lives a little bit into the mountains. There's a lot of windy roads, and so they uh, have a longer travel time associated with an evacuation. The second scenario that we studied assumes a wildfire spreading from the southeast. And so two of our key evacuation routes are closed and trips kind of have to route to the west to exit the town. And then our third scenario assumes a wildfire spreading from the northwest and one of our routes is closed. So you can see that a lot of the trips are uh, kind of pushed onto one major roadway of the evacuation routes. And you can see that we also have a second population group in blue. Uh, they would be experiencing a lot of smoke and reduced visibility when they're driving. So this is also a constrained population group during an evacuation. So for our study, we were looking at a four hour AM early morning evacuation, and we assumed that there's no shelter in place or local shelters that people are traveling to. And so this was a pretty conservative analysis for us because we were assuming that for the mostly entirely residential area, everyone is going to be evacuating. We also looked at uh, vehicle demand data for three population groups. We looked at our residents, employees, and equestrian trailer trips. And then we also looked at two network capacity scenarios. One is our baseline road capacity, and one is at 40% reduced roadway capacity, which is what we were assuming for drivers who have changes in driver behavior and reduced visibility because of the wildfire. So we got our origin destination from a few different sources. So we looked at census data, the regional travel demand model, and zone haven data. And we did some comparison between these uh, demand data sources to try and identify for each population group what had the most reliable data for the area. And we took this demand data and used our EVAC plus tool to further refine the demand for our evacuation scenarios. Uh, and just a note, Zone Haven is a subscription service that a lot of counties in California subscribe to. And this is uh, intended to have like shared maps and databases for first responders to communicate with residents in those areas uh, to let them know what kind of conditions they could experience to manage the evacuations and to uh, communicate safe post-disaster return. And then we also got local data for our background trips on the freeway. So again, we were looking at an early morning evacuation and we had different origin destination data for our different population groups. We also had different demand time series for these population groups. So you can see on the right on our tables in Zoom that we have resident, employee, equestrian, and background destination demand. And we have our demand time series as percentages. So this, these percentages in 15 minute time intervals represents the percent of that population that is beginning their evacuation trip during that time. And we got our demand time series from a former wildfire study. Uh, and this is the uh, chart that we used for demand time series. So you can see that the blue line represents employee and tourist trips. So they're the first group to begin their evacuation trips after an advisory is called. 
And then the red line represents residents who are traveling with other people. And so they take the longest to begin their trips and they have a pretty widespread distribution of when they're beginning those trips. So we use the blue line for our employee trips. We use the orange line for our resident trips. And then we use the red line for our equestrian trailer trips. So again, we had a four hour AM period for our uh, simulation based assignment, and we included a warm up period and a pretty lengthy cool down post assignment time period because we were still uh, adding trips. In the last 15 to 30 minutes of our uh, four hour period, and we wanted to capture the travel times associated with those trips. We just wanted to make sure that all of those trips were completed. Uh, and so that's where we got our pretty large uh, post assignment time period from. So our origin destination demand was in 15 minute time slices and yeah. our demand time series was as well. And then our assignment time intervals were also in 15 minute periods. And so what that means is during the simulation, the shortest path search and the subsequent volume balancing is occurring in 15 minute intervals. And we also set up the simulation so the current iteration is based off of the results of the previous iteration so that our uh, convergence could happen sooner. So we did a lot of calibration and validation for our model. These are just a few of the things that I wanted to point out on this project. So for our free flow speed, we started with posted speeds uh, in the in Portola Valley, and then we also looked at a big data source in RICS to help refine our free flow speeds. And this is because the area is pretty uh, mountainous and there's a lot of windy roads and we expected that people would be driving a bit slower than the posted speeds. And then we also input uh, different reaction times and effective vehicle lengths for our different vehicles. So the car group is for our resident and employee trips and then the equestrian group is for our equestrian trailer trips. And we also input different reaction times and effective vehicle lengths for our two roadway capacity scenarios. So one is at default driver behavior, and the other one is at 40% less aggressive driver behavior, which we would assume some level of uh, change in driver behavior because of the evacuation. So next I'm going to walk through some of our results for the third scenario. As a reminder, the third scenario is where a wildfire would be spreading from the northwest, and so one of our uh, roadways is closed. So this is showing a simulation of the link utilization, which represents the vehicle density on a given link. And so this is at the baseline capacity for the four hour time period, uh, and you can see how congestion is building over that time period and then recovering as well. And I also have another visual for scenario three at 40% reduced capacity. And you can see that uh, the roadway network is more congested for a longer portion of the network. So we also produced evacuation time estimates uh, for each of our scenarios based on the population group. So we provided travel times for when 90% of that population group has evacuated and when 100% of that population group has evacuated. And the range in travel times is representative of baseline road capacity and 40% uh, below baseline road capacity. So this is what we expected that employees would be the first group to uh, finish their evacuations, followed by residents and then equestrian trailers. We also produced average evacuation travel times for each of our population groups. And so this one is for the resident trips in scenario three. So you can see the blue bars represent baseline road capacity and the orange represents 40% below roadway capacity. And so these travel times are related to when uh, trips began their evacuation once the advisory is called. And so with this, you can see that for residents who begin their trip very early within the first 15 minutes after an advisory, or if they begin their trip pretty late after the advisory, they have a pretty quick evacuation travel time. And when they begin to leave later, as more people are on the network, uh, the travel times go up significantly. You can also see that uh, there's a pretty big difference between average travel time for baseline road capacity and 40% below baseline road capacity. 
And this varies from as few as a couple minutes during those off peak times to as much as 20 or 30 minutes during the most congested time periods. So next I'm going to walk through some of our uh, mitigation strategies to reduce travel times. And so on the supply side, one of our first recommendations was having traffic control officers at intersections. So we actually modeled traffic control officers at all of the intersections in yellow. And what we did for this is for those two way stop or always stop intersections, we set up fixed signal timing and then used Vizoom's optimizing signals for those. And through our uh, simulation, we were able to identify a couple other locations that would benefit from traffic control officers. And this is largely in the area where a lot of residents live and there were a lot of queues forming. And then additionally, we recommended the town to further study targeted evacuation management for a certain area of Portola Valley. This project is feeding into uh, their study on their safety element of their general plan. So that's where they'll look at additional uh, strategies. Additionally, we recommended some other supply side strategies. So one is converting a center left turn lane as another outbound lane. Uh, and then the next one is uh, in the link utilization visual, you saw there was one main roadway that had pretty high density, and that's where we recommended them extending or widening their roadway in the outbound direction. So this would serve as a protected bike lane during normal operating conditions, and then it would serve as a second outbound vehicle lane uh, during an evacuation. And so these cross sections show uh, existing conditions and what we would recommend in the future. We also recommended some demand side and information side strategies. So on the demand side, we had modeled about 1.91 um, cars per household for the, the travel time analysis. And we recommended a pledge of one uh, car per household for the evacuation, which was significantly reduce the number of vehicles on the roadway and reduce those travel times. We also recommended them to identify some locations for local shelters so that there are less people entirely evacuating the town. We have shorter trips within the network. And then some information side strategies to reduce travel times is to just be able to communicate with uh, people who are traveling, what the conditions on the roadway is, where they can expect uh, larger travel times and, and how they should be routing. And then I would like to conclude with some of the lessons learned from using Vizoom on this evacuation study. So one thing we realized is that calibrating driver behavior is pretty critical to our travel times. As you saw with the, uh, the bar chart, there was a pretty big travel time difference between our roadway capacity scenarios. Another thing that we would like to have is more research on validation criteria for DTA. That way, uh, we as well as our clients can trust our results more. Uh, and then another thing that we would like to see from the Zoom software is visual feedback during assignments or in between iterations. That way we're able to make adjustments and tweaks uh, before the assignment's completed so we can just improve our uh, actual work process. And then some recommendations for unique to evacuation studies is modeling traffic control officers. So again, we did this with fixed signal timing, but we think that actuated signal timing would be uh, more representative of the operations with traffic control officers. And then another kind of limitation is uh, inputting driver behavior parameters at the link level rather than the lane level. And where we see this being helpful is when we wanted to study and model uh, a shoulder being used as a second outbound lane, we would expect that shoulder lane to operate less efficiently than the roadway lane. And so we would like to be able to adjust those driver parameters that way. Uh, so that concludes my presentation. Uh, I just want to state that this field of evacuation planning is pretty uh, new and emerging, and we're continuing to evolve our practices at Fair and Peers and refine our tools like Evac Plus. We're always looking for talented people to join our team. Uh, so I'll end with that. Thank you for listening.